We understand that antibodies are a great tool in diagnostic immunology. The antibodies used for the detection, sorting, and quantitation of antigens and proteins of interest are of two main types. Primary antibody and secondary antibody. This classification is based on whether the antibody directly binds to the antigen of interest or it targets another antibody bound to the target antigen. In this video lecture, we will understand in detail what is the primary and secondary antibody and their importance. Let's begin. Primary antibody. Suppose these are three different antigens immobilized in a microtiter well. And this is the antibody specific to one of these antigens. We add this antibody in the well. This antibody will recognize its target antigen, and antigen antibody binding will take place. So here we saw that the antibody directly binds to its target antigen. This antibody is known as primary antibody. Primary antibodies are the antibodies that directly bind to their specific antigens. These antibodies are used to detect, measure and purify the antigen or protein of interest. Primary antibodies can be polyclonal or monoclonal. They are produced in animal species such as mouse, rat, rabbit, goat, etc. If an enzyme or other label is covalently attached to the primary antibody, it is known as conjugated primary antibody. And when an antigen or protein of interest is detected by a conjugated primary antibody. The type of detection is known as direct detection. This is because the labeled antibody is directly binding to the target antigen. So, we now understand that antibody which directly binds to its target antigen is known as primary antibody. And when this antibody is conjugated to an enzyme or other label, it is known as conjugated primary antibody. Detection assay involving conjugated primary antibodies are known as direct detection assay. Let's now understand what is secondary antibody. Again, this is our microtiter well with three different antigens. We add an antibody specific to one of these antigens. Specific antigen antibody binding takes place. We know that this antibody bound directly to the antigen is our primary antibody. Now, here comes a second antibody, which bind to the primary antibody. This antibody which targets the primary antibody is known as the secondary antibody. Secondary antibodies recognize and bind to the FC region of the primary antibody. If an enzyme or label is covalently attached to the secondary antibody, it is known as conjugated secondary antibody. Secondary antibodies are produced by immunizing a host animal with the antibodies from a different species. For example, Let's say target antigen was injected into mouse. And thus, primary antibodies were produced in mouse. Now these primary antibodies from mouse are injected into another animal species. Let's say goat. To the immune system of goat, these primary antibodies from mouse are foreign or non-self. Therefore, goat's immune system will start producing antibodies against these primary antibodies. These antibodies produced in goat are the secondary antibodies. Most of the time, in a detection assay, labeled or conjugated secondary antibodies are used. 
and when a conjugated secondary antibody is used in a detection assay, the detection is known as indirect detection. This is because the conjugated antibody is not directly binding to the antigen. Now the question is, why secondary antibodies are required when detection can be done using primary antibodies? There are many reasons for this. Two most important reasons are First, labeling primary antibody affects its immunoreactivity. So, this will automatically interfere with the sensitivity and specificity of the detection assay. Second, use of secondary antibodies increases the sensitivity and signal amplification. This is because multiple secondary antibodies are capable of binding to a single primary antibody at their FC region. So, at the end of this video lecture we now understand the difference between primary and secondary antibodies and direct and indirect detection. In the next video lecture, we will study direct ELISA. Thank you for watching.